Okay, this um, paper I gave my students as a practice to prepare for the mocks. Uh, they, they did it um, in normal conditions, so it wasn't under exam conditions. So here are my exam solutions, uh, and it's a complete paper. So my students have only done six out of eight topics, so they still um, can't do questions on astrophysics or all the questions on radioactivity. Okay, so it's for the Edexcel IGCSE, and it's paper one, so it's also used for the double awards of science, and the first paper from the physics IGCSE exam. So let's get started. These are the normal formulae which were given historically for paper one, um, but up to uh, last year, they were also giving additional equa uh, formulae, which um, are a more complete list of formulae, and it looks like, according to Edexcel's website, they will continue to give the additional uh, formula sheet um, up to 2027, I think I read. Okay, so these are the what would normally be given for paper one. Um, make sure when you're doing the exam, you're familiar with what equations there are, and make sure you know how to use them. Okay. Now, just before you start, if you go to um, the playlist where you find this uh, so exam solution, you will find other GCSE exam solutions that I've used previously, either as um, practice exams for my students in previous years, as in last year, and as practice uh, tests uh, during the year, which may be just on certain topics. So it'll be useful if you have a look at the playlist and use it for your revision for your GCSE mocks. And if you find them useful, please support the channel by sharing it with your friends who are doing uh, GCSE preparation, mock preparation, and like each video separately so um, it helps the channel with the YouTube algorithms and uh, subscribe if you want to know when future videos are made. I've had some requests for the November 23 paper where I've done the paper one. They want the paper two, and that's in the um, process of being produced, and it will be done before the mock exams, hopefully. Okay, so straight away, question one is on um, astrophysics. So I've put the answers in. The passage describes the evolution of a star with a mass that is much larger than the mass of the sun. So larger stars they die faster, so the larger the star, the hotter they get, in effect. So this is kind of the underlying um, concept that you need to be aware of. So larger stars also go through the nuclear fusion as the fuel, which hydrogen is used up. And larger stars can also fuse helium, for example, for longer, because the larger they are, the more they collapse gravitationally, and the, the denser they become, the greater the pressure becomes, and the greater the pressure, as you know from solids, liquids, and gases, the greater the temperature will become, the greater the kinetic energy of the particles, and the, the, the more forceful the collisions will be, the more um, frequent the collisions will be, so more interactions take place between the nuclei of the um, elements that are in there, 99% hydrogen, and that's um, why you get a faster rate of reaction, and that's why large stars um, don't last as long in terms of um, time, okay? All right, so they want you to use the words in the box to complete the passage. So it's just fill in the blanks. It says, so you can use each word once, more than once, or not at all. So make sure when you read the exam, like I've underlined it, each bit is giving you some information. And if you, if you gloss over it, you may make a mistake thinking that, for example, uh, my students often think, oh, I've already used that word, I can't use it again. Well, they're telling you the instructions for this question, and each question will be different. Okay, so it says, hydrogen atoms in a nebula move towards each other due to the force of gravity. This is in the beginning of star formation, so it's not yet. Um, a nebula is the gas from which uh, a star in space gravitates uh, towards itself, it, it shrinks in size, density increases, a density increases. And when it reaches a critical point, yeah, this loss of gravitational potential energy as they come closer will lead to the changes that you see. 
as the atoms move towards each other under gravity, their kinetic energy uh, store increases, which increases the temperature, which I explained to you before. Um, because the kinetic energy of the particles is directly proportional to the temperature in Kelvin. So this is a good revision of not just astrophysics, but it's an application of solids, liquids, and gases. And the material that stars are made of are, is high temperature gas, which we call a plasma, where it's all ionized. The, basically, the electrons have too much energy to stay uh, attached to their atoms. And you basically got a, a kind of um, soup of um, ions and electrons uh, whizzing around at uh, incredible speeds. Okay? So if the temperature becomes high enough, it says nuclear fusion of hydrogen will start, and the star enters the main sequence stage of its evolution. Well, as the words main sequence uh, would suggest, it's the main life cycle of the star. The main sequence stage of its evolution is when it does most of its um, nuclear fusion process. And that's when nuclear fusion of hydrogen nuclei is the energy that um, creates the balance situation in stars, okay? And it keeps the star from uh, shrinking further, okay? Because obviously that internal pressure also has an outward, remember pressure is a scalar quantity and acts in all directions equally. And the pressure in the center of the star is what keeps it from collapsing further, okay? So it acts, counteracts the gravity which is trying to pull the particles closer and closer together and it's reached a balance point and the, the star will have a certain diameter based or radius based on the, these two forces balancing each other out. Hope that makes sense. So while I'm doing these questions, I'm not just showing you what the answers are, I'm explaining um, the topic to you. So you do need to make sure you're listening carefully and you could use this as a good set of notes. So this would be a perfect set of notes, even if you haven't done this topic, to uh, pre-learn the, the final topic in IGCSE, which is on astrophysics. Then, it then says, so we're in the second part of the question, when hydrogen stops, fusion stops, in the core of the star, the core being the center, the core of the star will start to contract because as the, pre as the hydrogen fusion stops, the pressure decreases and then gravity takes uh, the lead again and it further contracts even smaller, becomes denser, becomes more pressurized in the center. And of course that increases the temperature in a layer um, surrounding the core. And then hydrogen can then fuse because the pressure is increased throughout the center part of the star called the core, the hydrogen fusion can start in the layer surrounding the core where it wasn't taking place uh, before. So the hydrogen fusion can then continue to take place slightly further from the center of the star. This causes, it says, the star to expand, yeah, as it then reignites or restarts the nuclear fusion process, the pressure builds up and there is an outward pressure uh, to rebalance the um, gravity which would, was further shrinking it and it reaches a new balance point again and its surface temperature decreases because as it expands that actually that be, when the volume increases um, and say the pressure stays roughly the same at that point when once you have a sort of kind of equilibrium situation if the volume increases the temperature will decrease it's kind of like the third gas law which um, is not uh, a requirement in the syllabus for solids, liquids, and gases. But um, when something expands, obviously it's less dense. So th there's less collisions and less pressure and the temperature will go down. Okay, so this is just something to think about and keep in your notes. So the star is now in a red supergiant phase. So this is what happens where, during the expansion. And eventually the nucleus fusion stops yeah, in the core of the star and the star can explode as a supernova explosion. This is only because the star is much larger than our sun. Our sun will not explode in a supernova explosion, although a similar thing will happen to our star as well. Uh, and we'll go through the red giant phase rather than a supergiant. It will not become a supergiant, it will become a red giant. 
So you will, when you do astrophysics, you need to know the life cycle of stars, and this is an excellent set of notes for the life cycle of larger stars, okay? And then finally, these larger stars, the core of the star will collapse because no more fusion can take place, and then gravity collapses the center, and it causes kind of um, um, a, 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 ba a bounce back, if you like. So it kind of it co recoils inwards, and then it bounces back out. So the outer part is sent out, and that's what the explosion is, and the inner part um, collapses. So you have an um, implosion before the explosion. So the inside becomes denser, and the outer part of the star is expelled. So the center part, the, uh, the core of the star, can collapse to form either a neutron star, which is a very, very, very dense um, substance, or even if it's even a larger star, it can collapse into a black hole. And a black hole is where um, atoms can't exist anymore, that the density is so large, the, the gravity becomes so strong that it, um, the um, material that stars are made of, which is atoms and nuclei, collapse into a, a single point, and that's called a singularity or a black hole. Whereas neutron stars, on the other hand, is when the atom collapses into one giant nucleus, and it's like the electrons have been absorbed by protons and form a giant mass of just neutron material. So imagine you have the density of a nucleus, but the size of a collapsed star. That, I believe, will be a density of about 10 to the power of 17 kilograms per meter cubed. I'm not sure I'm, I'm talking from memory, so you could look that up. So this is an excellent question to revise astrophysics, and my students haven't yet studied this topic, but they now have a complete set of notes if they watch this video on the evolution of stars. Hope you found that useful with my comments, and the bits in brackets is the, the underlying science behind the, the uh, uh, life cycle of stars, the uh, expansion and the collapse, okay? That's just six marks. And the reason I'm taking this long to go through it is I'm teaching you physics, okay? Question two then is uh, back down to Earth is a speed camera positioned at the side of the road. And this camera measures the speed of a vehicle on the road to determine whether the vehicle is traveling too fast or not. I recently gave this to my year 10 students as well as a practice exam, um, and most of them found it okay to do. Okay, the camera takes two photographs of the vehicle as it drives past, obviously, and the two photographs are taken exactly 0.25 seconds apart. So you know the time between the two photographs. The photographs are then used to measure the distance traveled by the vehicle during this time. Well, we know that the distance S is equal to the velocity the car is traveling at times the time which is fixed, okay? And then you have to state the formula uh, linking average speed to uh, distance moved and time taken. And you need to do it as a word equation to be uh, correct in terms of physics. But you can see the way I've used the symbols by drawing arrows to the words. So it's a kind of clever way of showing that you know what each symbol means and that you know that each symbol represents the words that they're asking for. And I think either of those methods will get you the mark, okay? But the, technically, the correct way is to use a word equation. It then says, in the time between um, the two photographs, the car travels a distance of 6.5 meters. So somehow, obviously, the camera can um, uh, work out through its, its programming computer programming, some kind of information that's in the um, database that is traveled a distance of 6.5 meters from the two photographs, and they want you to travel to calculate the speed using the equation that you just quoted. So you know the time was 0.25 seconds, you put the numbers in, and you get two significant figures, 26 meters per second. Okay, so that's the average speed, and you can see the ticks uh, are where you'll get the marks. So you only need to quote two significant figures because data provided is only accurate to two significant figures. And that's how you can work out how many significant figures you should quote. It then says the speed limit um, 
on the road is 80 kilometers per hour. Well, of course, we just worked it out in meters per second, so they want to see if you can change the units to determine whether the car is exceeding the speed limit. So what I did was I changed 80 kilometers into 80,000 meters in what 3,600 seconds, and I therefore divided 80,000 meters by um, 3,600 seconds to get the answer from kilometers uh, per hour into meters per second, yeah, because obviously 80,000 meters in 3,600 seconds would convert it into um, meters per second. I've done it to three significant figures first, and so that's about 22 meters per second. So I, I've just uh, explained um, to answer the question that the car is traveling faster than the speed limit because it was going at 26 meters per second and the speed limit was about 22 meters per second. So it's definitely exceeding the speed limit. All right, and then they're giving you a graph. So they want to see, so this is from topic one, forces in motion. Um, the velocity time graph shows the velocity of a lorry, um, how it changes with time, I should say, and the velocity is on the y-axis and the time is in seconds on the x-axis. Explain how the graph shows that the lorry has a constant acceleration. Well, acceleration is the gradient of velocity time graph, so that one mark for, for just stating that, so that's how you know. Um, and then since the gradient is constant, the acceleration must be constant. Straight line, or straight, st straight lines going upwards is constant acceleration. Okay? And if it's straight horizontal line, it's a constant acceleration of zero. So that also gives you um, an acceleration. It just happens to be zero because the velocity doesn't change. And if it's a negative um, gradient, then it shows that it's slowing down. Therefore, the acceleration will be negative or it is decelerating. So those are the kind of key words that you need to take um, from this doing this practice exam and adding to your notes. So whenever you get a question wrong, you can use my answers to do your corrections. And if you're one of my students, that's what I expect you to do. I want you to bring your question paper back, show me that you've corrected it, give yourself a mark if you've done it under exam conditions, and then uh, use um, the purple color pen that we've agreed would be the corrections to show that you have done the full um, work that was expected for you to do, okay? And then it says, state the formula linking acceleration, change in velocity and time taken. Well, acceleration is the change in velocity over time taken. So just like before, you should put it as a word equation. Yeah, so it should look like this. Yeah, and I'm just making, I also put the symbol equation because I next I'm going to show uh, how you're going to work it out from the graph. So on the graph, I've shown the final velocity here and the initial velocity here by reading off the two points of the graph that's the final velocity this is the initial velocity called v and u in the symbols that we uh, should normally use for kinematics and this is a study of motion so once you've got those two figures use the graph to find it and when you're doing it on the graph show where you how you've done it on the graph then put your numbers in then divide one by the other and quote your answer again to two significant figures because that's um, how accurately we know uh, this exam question. The, the data provided is only accurate to two significant figures. Okay, I'm going to stop there. First video done. Questions one and two. And then I'll have a break and come back and do it um, in between doing my normal weekend chores. Okay, if you found it useful, um, please show your appreciation by liking each video. Write a comment if you have any questions and share it with your friends so we get um, some benefit from doing this work for you. And then uh, make sure you subscribe so you know when future videos are uploaded. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye for now.